Hi guys, Chilly Bin here. Today I'm continuing on my journey of making my own gear and I'm going to be making my own raincoat. I had a few criteria in mind for my own raincoat. Uh, I wanted it to be lightweight, uh, potentially lighter than the existing raincoat I'm using, um, but if not lighter then definitely the same weight as that. I also wanted it to be full coverage, so I wanted it to have a really good hood to cover my head and also be long enough so that it will cover the bottom of my puffy and maybe even my shorts uh, during a heavy rainstorm. I also didn't want it to have too many seams or zippers because that's just more ways that water can get in. So I chose a pattern which doesn't have a front zipper. Instead it has velcro that starts at the chest and comes up under the neck and the jacket just pulls on over my head. It's long enough that it's almost to dress. I wanted my jacket to be hard enough wearing so I could use it for a through hike if I wanted to. In order to do this, I put reinforcing in the shoulders so that where the pack would rub would last a little bit longer. The jacket ended up taking me about seven hours to make, and this doesn't include any of the time I spent waiting for silicon seam sealer to dry or anything like that. That was just cutting, sewing, and active time. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, please subscribe to my channel so you can see more of my Make Your Own Gear videos and trail videos as I aim to get an entirely homemade backpacking kit. The first thing I did was sort out the pattern. I started out with the Green Pepper Woman's Coast Range Anorak pattern. I bought this, I don't know, a year and a half ago maybe with the idea of making a raincoat out of it. And when I played around with this pattern for the first time, I cut it out, but it was a little bit tatty in some places and a little bit hard to see the measurements, so I traced it off at the exact size I wanted it, um, so it was easy and ready to go. I didn't make many changes to the pattern, um, I decided to make the long version of the jacket so it would come down far enough to cover my shorts and I decided I didn't want the zippered chest pocket because I figured it would be underneath the sternum strap for my pack and probably not very comfortable so I got rid of that. So I kept the unzippered hand pockets on the front and otherwise pretty much just made it as per the pattern. Next it was time to cut out all the pieces. Uh, it looks like I'm making it out of random little pieces of fabric and that's kind of because I am. Uh, this is Membrane Sill Poly from Ripstop by the Roll. I originally bought the fabric to try and make a tent fly out of, um, but that project was a little bit of a disaster. And so I cut it apart and now I'm using it to make raincoat. Well actually two raincoats. This one's for me, but later on I'm going to make one for Raiden as well. Ripstop by the Roll claims that this is one of the lightest waterproof fabrics on the market. It comes out to about 0.93 ounces per square yard, which is pretty good. It's super, super slippery and uh, really weird to deal with, but it's impregnated with silicon and so it can be waterproof using silicon seam sealer. I actually also use some silicon seam sealer as a glue to glue several layers of this fabric together to act as reinforcing in places where I thought it would be useful. I didn't want to put any pins through the fabric while I was cutting it out, so I was using cat food cans as weights on top of my pattern pieces. Once I got all my pattern pieces cut out, it was time for the first round of gluing. I definitely didn't go about this the right way. If I do it again, or when I do it again, I will glue two sheets of fabric together using the seam sealer uh, and then cut the pattern piece out rather than cutting it out first and then trying to glue it together. I used two layers of fabric stuck together for the lining and reinforcing of the bill of the hood and also over the shoulders of the sleeves. Once the seam sealer was fully dried and cured, I was able to cut my pattern pieces back out again. I put a quick line of stitching across where the reinforcing connected to the rest of the sleeve, just in case it started to peel up at a later stage. Then it was time to start on the main body of the raincoat. The first thing I did was make the openings for the pockets on the centre front panel of the jacket. The openings were stitched into place, then they were trimmed 
turned back on themselves and then top stitched down again. The next thing to do was to sew the pocket bag into the inside front of the jacket. The next thing to do was to sew the side front panels to the centre front. I thought I might pin them in place, but in the end, I just held them in place to start off and then sewed them. Before I started making this jacket, I played around a little bit with what sort of seams I might use. I wanted something that didn't have very much loose fabric on the inside of the jacket to make it easier to seam seal. I'm not sure what to call the sort of seam that I ended up using. It wasn't a flat felled seam. What I did was sew a French seam inside out so that the French seam was on the outside and then laid that flat and sewed it flat. That meant that there was zero fabric on the inside of the jacket and a flat French seam on the outside of the jacket. Next, I sewed the sleeves to the front panel at the shoulders. Then I sewed them at the back shoulders as well. Then after a quick clean up, it was time to start assembling the hood. I started off by soldering the sides of the hood to the centre panel. Because of the curve around the hood, it was a little bit difficult to get it to lay flat, so I used some pins within the seam line to help me get it right. These would be covered up by the seam sealer at a later stage. Next I sewed the facing for the inside of the hood together along the centre front. Then I had to add a buttonhole for the drawstring for the hood. I did a couple of tests on a piece of scrap fabric before doing it on the real thing. Next I pinned the facing to the hood within the seam allowance and then sewed it all together. I trimmed off excess seam allowance to reduce the bulk in the seam, and then I clipped some of the curves so that it would lay flat when I top stitched it. Next, I sewed the Velcro onto one side of the opening before top stitching the inside of the hood. The next thing to do was mark the channel for the drawstring. I had to make sure that the drawstring channel lined up perfectly with the buttonholes that I added earlier. Because my chalk wouldn't stick to the fabric very well, I marked the location of the channel using pins within the seam allowance, and then I sewed the channel onto the hood. Once everything was top stitched, I added the other side of the velcro onto the jacket front. Next came the fun job of trying to pin the hood into the neck opening. The original pattern design uses the flap for the chest pocket to cover up the front of the hood attachment. But because I wasn't inserting the chest pocket, I didn't have this flap, so instead I had to fold it under and top stitch it in place at the same time I was top stitching the rest of the hood. Of course, my bobbin ran out right when I was trying to do this. Once the hood was fully inserted, I had to sew together the side seams. I did this starting at the armpit and working my way down to the hem and then working from the armpit down to the end of the sleeve 
to ensure that everything matched up at the armpit. Then it was time for a quick try on to make sure everything looked right before top stitching the side seams in place. Because of the way I decided to sew flat French seams on the outside of the jacket, it meant that I had to sew up the inside of the sleeve, which is why some of the stitching looks a little bit ridiculous. Next, I snipped off some of the excess fabric and tidied up all my loose threads. Then it was time for seam sealing. I didn't really have a very good method for doing this. I just laid the jacket flat, seam sealed all the seams that I could lay flat at that time, and then waited for them to dry. Then I moved it around and tried again. In hindsight, I wish I'd had some thinner and been able to thin out the seam sealer and then sponge it onto the seams to get better coverage. Doing that would have made the whole process quicker and easier, and I'll definitely do it next time. This seam sealing process took a really long time as I had to wait for it to dry fully before turning it each time. After everything was seam sealed and dried, it was time to do the hem and cuffs. First I trimmed everything off so that it was straight. For the hem, I just did two rows of stitching around the bottom. For the cuffs, I added some elastic to try and get a little bit of a seal around my wrists. Here we are, here's my fully completed raincoat. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. If I make one again, I might make the sleeves a little bit longer, but otherwise it's great. I added a little square of soft Velcro so that when the neck is open, I could pin the sparkly Velcro out of the way. I love the way that the hood fits with the drawstrings really closely around my head with a nice little peak at the front. I haven't quite got the hang of doing it up yet though. Overall, the completed seam sealed raincoat came to 108 grams on my kitchen scale, so I'm really happy with the weight. Now it's time for a test. I don't want to do this. <laughs> A tiny bit of water got in by my neck, but otherwise I stayed completely dry, so I'm really happy with how waterproof it came out.